coming to you from across the cosmic web. You're watching Countdown. And now your host, Kyle Universe. Greetings, Kyle Universe here. Um, movies? We all love movies, right? Especially Disney movies. Now, a lot of times when a movie wraps up, the props used in the production either get destroyed or put into a warehouse. But on rare occasions, movie props find their way into the Disney parks. Today, we are looking at 10 movie props scattered across Disneyland. Number 10. Let's start out this list with probably the most famous movie prop found in a ride. Back in 1954, Disney released the classic 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and in this film, the character Captain Nemo owns an organ and is quite adept at playing it. Now at the time, this was merely just for the movie, but a few years later, the Imagineers were coming up with a variety of rides, one such being the Haunted Mansion. Now to decorate the mansion, I'm guessing that Captain Nemo's organ was just lying around the prop house, and someone decided to move it into the ride. That's right, the organ you see in the ballroom being played by a ghost is none other than the actual organ James Mason played in the 1954 film. The only difference being that the pipes were added to the top of it. Number 9 Now before we leave the Haunted Mansion, let's talk about the movie. Man, I was so looking forward to this, ever since I saw the teaser trailer. I kid you not, I had dreams about how awesome this movie was going to be. Needless to say, I was kind of let down. I mean, I still saw it three times, but still, yeah, disappointed. Don't ask about why I saw it three times. But seeing as how this is a list of movie props, there was something that I loved that they did. When creating the graveyard set for the movie, they wanted to be authentic, so they borrowed actual tombstone props from the Haunted Mansion ride to decorate the set. To be honest, even though the movie wasn't that great, that is pretty cool. And so after the movie was done filming, the tombstones went right back into the ride, making them movie props that were put into a Disney attraction, even though they started there first, and then became a movie prop, and went back to being a ride prop. I'm saying that counts. Number 8 Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It's actually one of my favorites. There's just something about Frontierland in general that is just so awesome. I think some of it has to do with the attention to detail on all the buildings and rides. And of course, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is no exception on the details. So on the other side of the company, a movie was being created called Hot Lead and Cold Feet, a delightful western comedy that is really entertaining. I suggest to go check it out. So while the Imagineers were putting Big Thunder Mountain together, the idea came to use some of the Hot Lead movie props to add a little bit of extra flair to the ride. In one scene, characters Eli and Billy use two steam donkey engines, and of course, hijinks ensues. But the Imagineers were able to get these two engines, and you can still see them today. One of them is right outside the exit to Fantasyland, heading towards Frontierland. As you exit, look to your left and the engine will be up on a hill. The other one you can find in the line queue of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. After you go under the bridge, you will see a track going up on the right, and on the bottom of that track where it levels out is the second engine. Make sure to look for them next time you're in Frontierland. Number 7 Traveling down into New Orleans Square, our next visit is at Pirates of the Caribbean. Who doesn't love this ride? The answer is nobody. Now the movie prop that we'll be talking about here is from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie itself. Remember in the first one, The Curse of the Black Pearl, how there was this Aztec chest full of golden coins? Well, after filming was done, that chest made its way into the ride. When your boat is drifting through the treasure room, right before you exit the scene, on your left is the screen-used Aztec chest from the first Pirates movie. Honestly, I think that's the best addition added to the ride ever. And the thing is, so many fans of the movie franchise float on by without even knowing that they are just a few feet away from such an iconic piece of pirate history. Number 6 Now before we leave Pirates of the Caribbean, let's talk about the Haunted Mansion movie. Yes, again. Okay, so you know the scene where they're all sitting at the table discussing whatever? Well, most of these movie props, like the chairs and the table, probably went into storage. But a few years later, when they were designing a new animatronic for the ride modeled after Jack Sparrow, they brought one of those chairs out of storage and used it for Jack to sit on towards the end of the ride. It should also be noted that one of the other chairs was placed in the Haunted Mansion's attic and was used for one of Constance the Bride's husbands to sit on. Number 5 
So, I know I said the Haunted Mansion's organ was the most famous prop in Disneyland, but this one is probably equal to it. Right at the entrance to the Indiana Jones ride is the truck that was used in filming the Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know that scene where Indiana Jones is on the outside of the truck trying to get inside? Yeah, it's now an awesome piece of set dressing. And I guess I can combine this into one entry on this list, but right when you get off the ride, if you look to the left, there's a little minecart. Now this minecart was said to be somewhere in the Temple of Doom. Not the one that Indy and Short Round ride in, but somewhere in the background. However, this has been under much debate on whether or not it's true or not. But I'd like to think it's true. Number four. So back in the 50s, Davy Crockett ruled the Earth, with a successful TV show and compilations becoming films. In one of these adventures, Davy Crockett was pitted against Mike Fink in a race down the river in keelboats. Davy captaining the Bertha May, and Mike on the Gully Wumper. After filming wrapped up, the two boats were moved to Disneyland to sail around the rivers of America in an attraction called the Mike Fink Keel Boats. Unfortunately, these boats aren't around today. Sometime after the ride opened, the actual original Davy Crockett boats were replaced with higher capacity versions. Which is understandable, as the ride became more and more popular, bigger boats helped with the wait time. But even though the original ride doesn't exist today, you can still see one of the updated keelboats parked outside Mike Fink's cabin on the rivers of America. Number three. So before we leave this part of the park, let's make our way to the train station of New Orleans Square. Okay, this one kind of half counts, but I think we can fit it in. So in 1949, a Disney movie called So Dear to My Heart was released. For this film, a little train depot was created. After the film was finished, Walt Disney offered to give the depot to Ward Kimball, the Imagineer who designed it. He accepted and put it in his backyard. Years later, when the New Orleans Square train depot, at that time referred to as the Frontierland train depot, opened, they used the same blueprints on the prop from the movie to create this version for Disneyland. So, it's a prop that was based off an actual movie prop. So like I said earlier, it's not the actual one, but if you squint, still somewhat counts, I guess. Number two. For the remainder of this list, let's go over to the land of tomorrow. Uh, Tomorrowland. And for this entry, we are looking at one of the best rides ever, Star Tours. Now this one makes sense, right? It's a ride of Star Wars, one of the most successful movie franchises in history. Naturally, something from the movies would be in the ride, right? And there are. Some pretty cool things at that. In the line queue, you will see both R2-D2 and C-3PO working on a space cruiser. But these two animatronics aren't just normal animatronics, they're actual screen used. C-3PO is one of the costumes, or backup costumes, for Anthony Daniels. And R2-D2 was one of the many different droids made for filming. For all we know, when the two walked across the desert in A New Hope, these two might possibly have been the ones used for that shot. Wow, just blows the mind. Number one. Now this last one, not many may know about, but it can be found in the Star Wars launch bay. Now if you walk around the launch bay, you will see lots of Star Wars ship models behind glass. Now of course when I saw all these, I thought they were real props, but upon talking to a cast member, I was informed that all of them were specifically made for the launch bay. However, after the cast member said that, he then paused and said, except one. He then directed my attention over to the Star Destroyer. This cast member then proceeded to tell me that out of all the ships, this one was a real movie prop and was the one used in Episode 4. Meaning that that opening scene when the Star Destroyer flies overhead, this was the model used for that. WHAT?! Ever since he told me that, I couldn't stop looking at this piece of movie history. Absolutely remarkable! What was George Lucas like, Star Destroyer? What did his beard sound like? And more importantly, was this cast member telling me the truth, or just pulling my leg? I would like to believe that he's telling me the truth, because if he was, just, I have no words. Wow. Well, there you have it. Ten, or mostly ten, I guess. I mean, we did have the train depot in there, and one could argue if the tombstones count. But anyway, anyways, movie props found in Disneyland. Do you know of any others that I didn't mention? Leave a comment below. I'm Kyle Universe, see you out there.